Hello, welcome, Lydia. Welcome to the the great reopening. It's been a little while since we last spoken to you, and uh, yeah. it's been amazing what, we've, what you've told me about what's been happening. But there'll be people here uh, watching this video who they don't know about you yet. Would you like to give a little introduction about yourself and what's been going on for you? Yeah. So um, my husband and I run we run a, a card and gift shop really in in Droitwich in Worcestershire. Um, so. Uh, we've been there for 30 years now um so we employ a lot of our family in the shop as well um we have seven children so uh, for age, uh ages from about 23 down to 12 so we get them involved in the business as well um so during the first lockdown we were closed for 12 weeks um obviously we didn't know really what was happening then um but but we've refused to close second and third lockdowns Huh? Yeah. And how's that been? Um, it's been quite tough in places, but um, we've just been amazed at how we've just managed to keep going, really. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are absolute soldiers and real examples of, you know, what can be done if you just stick to your guns and just don't back down. And, and uh, then you start to realise a lot of it's a lot of smoke and mirrors. Um, yeah. The threats are empty threats. There's no weight behind yeah. them. So I think you're dead right there. So, so yeah, what's your tally at the moment? Mine at the moment, I think I got a fine, but I haven't even received it yet. It's only about maybe 100 pounds. I don't know what a standard fine is yet, but I haven't got it yet. But yours is a lot higher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, 27,000 through the shop and uh, various mask fines sort of probably now uh, 300 pounds with fines uh, with mask fines yeah well, so what's that for is that just in like public transport or what um that was because the, the police have been to the shop six times now um so um we we don't wear masks in the shop um i often wear a, an exemption um badge but sometimes i haven't got it on or whatever so yeah, if um, if they've been in and we haven't had the masks on, they just fine us for not wearing masks. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just, just love giving out fines. They really do. Yeah, um, but this so is we even we even received fines for um, non-essential travel to a non-essential shop. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Man. But yeah, that's truly incredible, though. It's really inspiring that you've you've stayed open this this whole throughout all of these lockdowns. You know, and there, there are people that. They don't even know that. Like, wow, there are still people that are open. It's like, yeah, it's incredible, but it takes a lot of time. Yeah. It's not, it's not easy. Um, I mean, we're just really ordinary people, and in, in the, the second lockdown, we just thought, oh my goodness, uh, we've got Christmas coming up. It's our best time of year. We had thousands of pounds worth of stock, um, so the government weren't even offering enough to cover the rent. Plus, you know. I've always been taught to earn my own living, not to sponge off other people. Um, so, you know, and we didn't know how long lockdowns were going to go on for. So we just said, right, let's just go for it. Let's just open up. And I mean, I think we even thought we might go under the radar a bit, but no, first day, the police were there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how quickly they turn up for this stuff. They really, uh, they don't mess with yeah. them, for this kind of stuff. They're very efficient, but. Um, yeah. So, um, how do you feel about the the 12th of April? It's uh, the, I mean, it might, might makes too much difference to you. Maybe you can just relax a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we are really looking forward to the 12th of April because every day when we open the shop, we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, we've had obviously all the police visits. We've had council. Uh, we've had that. We've had them coming and actually giving us the fines. Um, and then even though look, people have been really good because we have been busy yeah yeah so um yeah we've we've had a uh, we we have had sort of some unpleasantness from um the general public not not too much at all but um yeah so you are open to whatever anybody wants to come in and say to you because your shop's open and you're you're there but um so hopefully from the 12th onwards we'll you know maybe we'll be more relaxed yeah and the people, yeah, but yeah the, the public or themselves will hopefully start to relax a bit. And uh, yeah, because <laughs> that's a lot of what's driving all of this madness is the, the, the fear in the population is like, government, please, do absolutely crazy. So, um, 
So yeah, yeah. And, uh, I don't know if you've just recently seen the um, announcements made by by Boris that j just recently talking about um, like uh, COVID passports. I don't watch any announcements from the big Mr. J at all. Um, the COVID passports, well, they're, they're just being used to frighten everybody into doing something that, that they don't want to do. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, people must stay strong about that. Yeah, because they, they're going for a sort of a smart kind of approach that so the way they usually, they seem to do it, you know, it's like roll things out gradually and uh, yeah. saying that they're going to try it with a certain part. Uh, just like like large gatherings like festivals and, and stuff like that um but it won't be for pubs yet that's what they're saying so yeah uh, i'm assuming no one will ever need a, a vaccine to come into the your card shop <laughs> absolutely not yeah. no so people just need to really um be vocal about you know if they come across venues that don't allow them to to come in because of the the, part, uh, the vaccine thing they just need to really voice that because businesses you know if you're in business you 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 treat your customers seriously and um yeah so we just need to be as vocal as we can about that and uh and not bow to pressure because this is what it's all about yeah, exactly they're, they're just trying to coerce people into taking it yeah and, uh, they're using sleight of hand sneaky tactics and yeah uh, but the, the, the thing is yeah they're going to be millions and millions of people who don't actually want to take this totally so, um I don't know how they're going to handle that, but then if those people can, you know, maybe come together in some sort of clever way and yeah, just do our own thing to to as much as we can, that that'd be quite cool because you know it's uh, yeah, they're not like looking after us very much, are they? There's always ways and means of getting round. Yep. Yes, and we we have to to carry on because um, I don't want that vaccine, <laughs> but I still still uh, still want to. So yeah. so yeah, you're you what a, why it's so incredible what you're doing is because you, you you show that it's possible to be able to actually rebel. And if enough people actually just took the time and the courage to to, to do this, then things yeah. like the, the vaccination passports won't even get anywhere. In the they're throwing everything at us really because they the last police visit we had, which was on the thirteenth of February, the day before Valentine's Day, um I mean, it was orchestrated, really. They sent two police officers in to really try and intimidate us to close that that day. And um, uh, two of our daughters were in there as well, one of which is only 14 years old. And um, yeah, they, they really tried hard to um, to get us to close immediately. But they just didn't. We just stuck to our guns um, and just quietly kind of said, no, we're not closing, we're staying open. Um, they said, oh, we're just going to go and have a word with our boss then. And uh, they went out and I don't even know whether they did even speak to their boss. I don't know. Came back in and basically um, said that they couldn't really do anything. They couldn't really do anything. So, <laughs> yeah, so they just ended up leaving. <laughs> but, um, but it's all a bit unpleasant. Yeah, yeah. And uh, hopefully the, the silver lining is there enough it sort of wakes people up in a way that, that they, they realize you know maybe there is something uh, going on here in our, in our government that actually isn't in our in our favor i mean i don't know what, yeah do you think it could be possible that parts of our government could have been like maybe bribed or something or blackmailed or corrupt in some kind of way possibly i mean that that is possible that is possible i mean you know who knows what's going on it just seems so deep somehow and you know sometimes i i try and work things out and everything and in the end i just think well i can't really sort this out but we've all got we've all got ways where we can do our bit whatever it is in our lives that we can do that shows that we're not we're not just going to be told what to do um and, and we've got to do those things so it's different from one person to the next i mean if you don't own a business you can't keep a business open but the, the whole mask thing you know, if if we all just took our mark, you know, the the mask is such a symbolic thing, mm -hmm. and it, you know, if if we could just get as many people as possible not wearing masks, that would be a fantastic thing. Yes, well, that's a, it's a, an important point as well you you raised because that was like one of the first sort of mandates that came out. Um, yeah, in the uh, summer, yeah, <laughs> not actually. even in virus season. <laughs> <laughs> None of it made any sense. And before then, no. it was like 
the, the, the general consensus was they don't wear the mask unless you're sick. And then it's like, no, no, everyone has to wear the mask. And then that's, then people agreed to that. And then that's um, how we, and now it's become, it started with no masks, no entry. Although many people still yeah. fall back against that. But now it's looking like even no tests, no entry or no vaccination, no entry. That seems to be where they're going. The test thing is, uh, yeah an interesting one as well because it's like you've got the, the vaccine that's sort of put out and usually um that's you know people get really worried about that but it's like, oh the test and it's like not seen as bad but it's still i don't want to know i don't know what your feel, thoughts are about the, the tests themselves as well but i don't want to deal with any of this stuff no well i've never actually had a test and um so uh yeah it's just crazy i mean the pcr tests they they're just they, they shouldn't be being used anyway. The, the whole, it, it, the PCR tests are a prop for this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, bring down the PCR testing and bring the whole thing down because that's how the government are maintaining their um, ability to keep things closed, to make decisions based on test results that are so dodgy. Yeah. It's, um, just, it's just like... Um then it's like just telling people that and some people just don't seem to recognize that what that actually means. It means that the whole thing could just be totally wrong. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, that's right. Know. Completely different way of thinking. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the mask thing, what we need to really gently say to people is that the masks are unhealthy for the wearer, mm -hmm. especially yeah. wearing them long periods of time. I mean, in a shop situation, you're always instinctively touching touching the mask. You always do, especially if you're talking to someone because you have to keep pulling it up. So you're dealing with cash and then you're touching the mask and it's so bad for you, the, the bacteria that's just sitting in your mouth area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and like, so, I'm seeing these, um, these waves happening in Europe and I'm wondering how much of that is fueled by the mask wearing? Because I know in many places in Europe, they've gone really hard on the masks. Like, uh, I'm hearing, you know, in Spain, they just, they just yeah. informed they're on and they never really came off. So I wonder, or is it just, the yeah. test just being ramped up? And <laughs> all that stuff that a lot of the mask stuff that the masks are coated with, that you're breathing in when you wear those masks, it's just, yeah. yeah I, and I, healthy I, people, cool. healthy people shouldn't be wearing masks anyway. I mean, since when do healthy people go around wearing masks? Um, we've never done that. No, <laughs> never needed to do that. No. It's just madness. No. It's like normal for people to just, but hopefully, hopefully with, you know, people like you and people like me, people that are fighting back, there's loads of us around the country. Hopefully enough of us get strong enough, connected and keep um, putting out the, the truth and the message and we'll, we'll have this effect and uh, enough people sort of realize, Hey, wait a minute, this shit's pretty crazy. Actually. We, um, we don't actually need any of this stuff and we can go back to yeah. like a pre pre 2020 level of living would be nice so we don't have to deal with any of this stuff but i yeah. mean if failing like total removal of it perhaps like we could have the choice for it like if you really want the vaccine yeah, yeah. You really want to be around people who have had the vaccine then you can have your venues and vents over here and then anyone who doesn't yeah any of that they can maybe just sign yeah. a piece of paper that says okay, I don't care if I get COVID or I don't know, something, <laughs> and they can ha have all their fun over there. So yeah. For everyone, I think. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But um, we, we, you know, if business, businesses are going to open now on the 12th of April, and then, you know, I don't know what's going to, I have no idea what the government are planning next, but we mustn't go back. <laughs> oh, no, they probably don't know. They, we mustn't go. We must not go back into lockdown. Businesses, once no, they're open, no. they must stay open. Yes. Um, lockdowns are awful. They are terrible. They're they're bad for you know m the mental health, the 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 fear factor. Um, they actually incubate the virus. I mean, I can remember back in when we, we it was first announced back in March. 2020, uh, uh, you know, we're going to have to lock down. I was like, what? You know, if you lock down, if you hide away, where does the virus go? It just, 
it just sits there waiting uh -huh. for you to come out. It just prolongs everything, you know? Exactly. It doesn't logically um, make sense, does it? The only time it actually made any sense no, it at doesn't. the beginning was possibly like, okay, so we do this so we prepare the NHS. Remember that? And then we'll be ready so we don't have to do that ever again. That's, that's, like, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. And it didn't happen. Yeah. And a bit of mother's wisdom here, uh, having brought up seven children, um, yeah, when they were all little, really? we used to, we used to, we used to dread, um, dread winter because of all the bugs. And I, I've always maintained that, um, the, the kids that got the bugs first, they had it the worst. And then as the subsequent children got it, the, it, it, I mean, I'm no medical person at all, you know, this is just mother's wisdom. So as, as the, uh, the children that got it sort of more towards the end, and then it kind of petered out. It used to peter out. And I just think it's the same with this, you know, if we'd have just shelter, uh, shielded the vulnerable and uh, the old, uh, and then the healthy just carried on with their lives, mm -hmm. you know, we would have provided that buffer for, the, for, for those people when it was time for them to sort of feel that they were okay to come out and to carry on yeah yeah so we need this to be the end really of lockdowns um and then they they, they, they have to pull something out now before people get too happy and back from having fun again <laughs> yeah you know? it was, yeah it was like uh coming to the end yeah so um there's this this couple aren't the, the pizza guy um joining up with the um is it the nightclub and they're they're taking the government to court about um be read about that um was that in wales yeah they, they, well they're trying to bring it forward to uh because the non-essential shops are allowed to open on the on the 12th of april but hospitality is not allowed to open till may the 17th or something so they're trying to get it brought forwards Okay, was that um, was that anyway related to what was happening with Matt Hancock as well? Because there was something about he um, get summoned because of uh, trying to explain why certain shops can open and certain places can't. Is that anyway related? I wonder. Yeah, it might be to do with the same thing. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I hope that succeeds. Um, yeah, sounds interesting. I haven't heard of you know that that case specifically. What he's talking about there. Uh, because the hospitality industry has just been hit so badly. It has. And it's like, uh, I'm seeing um, maybe only 40% of pubs can actually open, even on the 12th. Even, even when they're, even, sorry, even with the outdoor, you know, the outdoor um, allowances, most pubs can't even open anyway. So. I know, it's, it's such a shame, isn't it? It's insane because you've got people that want to go yeah. to the pub, pubs sitting there empty, and people that want to open the pub, but the government's stopping the two happening. It's just madness. Yeah. <laughs> it is. But, but hope, you know, hopefully, once, um, like I say, this is, this is irreversible. So we get, we get out of the lockdown, then we get out of uh, this mindset of having to have tests for everything and vaccines, and then. Maybe you never know. Maybe the, next, the end of this year or so, we've totally wiped it all out and uh, everyone can relax. How nice would that be? Yeah, it'd be great. Now we've got the control, uh, like Florida and uh, is it Texas as well? I mean, they're they're free and um, they're not having any ill effects from. But yeah, like, like you were saying, the, um, the, we, have, we have control groups, you know, Texas and Florida. These places are fully open. They have no, yeah. they're, they're no mandates there ever and, and life's back to normal. And so if they yeah. can have them, why? What a surprise. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just everything's okay. It's like, so if that can happen there, I mean, it's happened in other countries as well, but people, it doesn't seem to get enough attention and even still the fact that that's happening in america there, there are quite a few states and uh but it's just getting that message out there it's just trying to tell people yeah like, hey, look, look this this is nothing did you hear there is just that also the uh a, 
one of the members of the Conservative Party, I can't remember her name exactly, saying about how there is no pandemic now. Yes. Amazing. Helena, I think, Helena or something. Yeah. That's incredible. I was actually very surprised. A, a politician. I mean, do you think maybe they're not all bad? Maybe there are actually still some good guys in there, you know? Yeah. She has got nine children. It's something about having lots of children, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. That makes you want to care about the Because you see, you think, more. yeah, you're thinking about their future. You're thinking, yeah. wow, what kind of future are we creating for our children, you know? Oh, man, that's terrible, isn't it? And the fact... I mean, even the tests are being normalised now, but if, if that's that's it, then it'll be the vaccine. And yeah, we can't. We got to stop it. We can't. Um, we can't let this carry on for the kids. It'll be what kind of a world would it be? Yeah. But thankfully, I think we we're actually see. It's amazing to see all around the country that um, the bands of resistance are building up together, and people like you are standing up for for what's right. And uh, if we just keep going, and you know, we can keep gathering momentum and and uh, members um yeah we're quite confident we'll we'll get so i think yeah if we could just get to the choice level at least uh <laughs> you've got the choice in this you don't have to um have to have a you know if you've got an establishment like yours you have the choice whether you want to go for this man. So that'd be nice but so uh so lydia it's been a really yeah nice talk to you again i'm really happy to have you on and hopefully the uh yeah you too travis connection wasn't too bad so if there's any um last things you'd like to say to, to anyone to, to the public to, to anyone? yeah just stay strong be positive um try not to just read too much negative stuff really um and we've all got to do what we can do to um yeah to uh to change things mm -hmm. yeah to make things better absolutely wise words yeah Thank you very much. cheers lydia and um i'll speak to you soon yeah. good luck good luck out there and you can relax a bit. Yeah, thanks. I've only got a week to go or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. Nice one. Cheers. See you. Bye. Bye.